After taking flight and covering the distance to the box store that we had just cleared out, I went up towards the parking lot and saw that it had turned into a literal battleground. And I wasn't even exaggerating a little. It looked like a convoy had tried to pull up next to the strip mall on the opposite side of the bookstore, not knowing we'd already cleaned it out, and had gotten surrounded. Men hugged to the walls as they tried to hit the targets coming in from all sides. The darkness hid the numbers from them, but not from me. I could see so many creatures coming in. From the roof were spider-like creatures, ranging from five feet across to must have been at least twenty. A few had that only look on the top of human with a spider-type bottom. It was strange to see. They seemed to be trying to get in position as they would reach down and grab anyone in the open. The men grabbed would scream as they were lifted into the air and thrown up as high as possible, landing with a sickening crunch onto the pavement. They didn't try to wrap any that I could see, nor did they seem to bite them. My skin crawled at the idea of these insects even touching me. There were also a bunch of those dog-ish things running around, some on all fours while others stayed on two legs, but all of them were armed. They were in a firefight with a convoy, while another group, this time of something I couldn't make out, ripped the front of the vehicles apart. Guess that answered why they didn't just run away as soon as they got ambushed. As this was going on, I could see another group of soldiers making their way on foot. What they couldn't see is that something was following them, and it was big. Turning their way, I tried to get a closer look. I could see that if was keeping pace with them as they made their way through the forest, but it kept closing the gap between it and the squad of soldiers. Whatever it was, I didn't know how they couldn't hear it going through the woods being so big. I shook my head thinking, how did they not hear that? I couldn't let them get slaughtered, so I got closer and suddenly wished I had grabbed my gear before I left. Before I could call out to them, it struck. The roaring as it charged was only a slight warning to the soldiers as this thing crashed into the front of their line. The soldiers screaming and fired their weapons randomly into the night as at least two screamed in pain as they were quickly silenced. Then I heard one of them begin to use a shotgun and the creature screamed in pain before charging at the soldier. I was close enough now that I could hear flesh being torn and the gurgle of the blood in a man's throat. Not that I'm close enough to see. Fuck, that thing is big. It looked like the biggest grizzly I had ever seen, yet its snout was pushed in and I could see human ears on its head along with feathers sporadically covering its body with fur. It stood up to attack and must have been at least ten feet tall. And I mean at least. It roared again as another man fired in fear. It turned its attention to the man and seemed to want to savor the kill. It slowly made its way to the man and was desperately trying to reload his rifle. While this was happening, I pulled up hard and gained altitude. When I heard a shot, the unmistakable sound of a rifle being kicked into a tree, I curled up my wings and went for broke. Landing on its back, I extended my claws and dragged them all the way down this monster's back. Blood sprayed up as each of my foot and hand claws gashed deep into the back, leaving lacerations from the shoulders all the way to the thighs. For a moment, I thought I might have lucked out and got an artery, but this thing just reached around behind itself. Something real bears can't do, and tossed me into the forest guess he had no idea what he was fucking with because I landed on my fours, sliding to a stop, and charged again from the shadows. It didn't see me coming as I violently went for its neck, in particular the left side of its neck. If this thing used to be human, then the main carotid artery wouldn't be too deep under the skin on the left side. In rage, it swatted me away like a fly, and this time I couldn't right myself before clipping a tree with my pelvis and spinning out of control. While sliding across the ground, I went face first into another tree. And that really hurt. As I got to my feet, I could see I was having trouble staying on his feet. While it grabbed at its neck, now spraying blood all over the place, 
I would have grinned as the soldiers had now recovered from the shock, had now begun to perforate the thing. Good thing too, since I think I got a concussion. The bear thing ran off whimpering and I could see red lights begin to come on. What the hell are you doing? I bellowed into the night. The soldiers looked around for me, but I was still behind some foliage. Who are you? They screamed out. I'm the guy that just saved your ass. Still struggling to get to my feet. I'll come out if you promise not to shoot me. I could see him look around and say, All right, fine. Where are you? The rest of the men didn't lower their weapons, so I knew I was toast if I came out. Turn off those lights, I demanded as they all kept their guard up. Taking a breath, I waited until the one closest to me was not looking, and I darted out of the foliage. I grabbed the soldier's weapon and raised it away. In his ear, I said, Shut them off, you moron! Everybody can see them. All the others spun around to face me. Even red lights, when you have vision like mine, is like a flare to the face. So I turned away a bit. I spoke to the one in my arms. Shut them off before they attract another one of those damn things. He seemed to finally get it, and he reached up and shut off the red lens. The rest followed suit. I looked at them and just had to ask, Where the hell are your nods? Without skipping a beat, one said, We weren't issued any. Great, I said as I rolled my eyes. I'll lead you to the convoy, then. One of them said, reaching out almost blindly, What about them? Touching one of the fallen soldiers. I didn't have the heart to tell him that his friend would be eviscerated. Probably was dead from shock before his body hit the ground. I simply walked over to the bodies and started taking off what they needed. Here, take their ammo and tags, I said as I reached under the shirt. I didn't find the tags there, but I did find them attached to their belt loop. It was only two minutes of searching the bodies, but we were now on our way. In the distance, we could still hear the firefight going strong, just slower. I rushed them through the forest to get them to the street, pointed out where they had to go, and I took off to the nearest tree to try and get some altitude. Taking flight, I could see the remainder of the squad was just saved taking positions. From my vantage point, I could see the largest spider female get in position for another grab. One of the guys I had just saved fired a shot and I saw the female spider's body slump onto the roof and slowly slide off, landing with a loud thump in front of the few scared soldiers that were left. Getting above them, I got a good look at what had taken apart the first Humvee. A humanoid bull moose was laying dead on the ground. From the damage I could see, I would guess that that 50 caliber had opened up and just tore it to pieces. Considering the next truck had the 50 still rocking, and a half of the moose's head was missing, it was a safe bet. The other spider female seemed more than a little mad that the big one was taken down. Two of the five that remained descended to go full rage mode and decided to melee. Though they got one or two soldiers, they didn't last long and the others backed off and went back into the darkness. It appears the battle was nearly over as the squad linked up with the main group, though I didn't count your chickens before they hatched, ever. Without warning, I was hit from the right and then on my left shoulder. Then I felt the pain as something crashed into me and began to pierce my hide. I looked and a bat thing had lanched onto my right leg and the other one was trying to chew its way through my arm. Instinctively, I tried to shake them off, but another one dove into my back, damaging the muscles on my wings. The last straw was the one grabbing my tail. From that point on, there was only one way to go, and that was down really fast. Thrashing all the way down, we landed just within view of the convoy's lights. As I thrashed trying to get those things off, their heavy machine guns, something like a 240 or better, opened up and sprayed us all. It was like slow motion as I could see the bat holding my left arm with hate in his eyes, have its head explode in my face as the bullets ripped through it. The next bullet hit me in my left torso between my heart and my lung. It must have damaged my lung because I screamed. Pink blood came spewing out of the hole left behind. The third bullet 
hit higher as it grazed the lower part of my collarbone, ripping out flesh as it tore through the other side. The other one grazed my jaw, leaving only a cut, and with that I fell to the ground. My body didn't want to move as I saw a tracer round screaming over my head. I thought, oh God, if we're about to meet, I hope you won't hold things against me as I try to survive. Please protect the ones I called family as I did before. If I'm gonna go, alright, just make it quick. As the machine guns rocked on, I could hear a couple people yelling, Cease fire! Cease fire, motherfucker! Stop shooting! Cease fire! I said cease fire! God damn it! Coming from the convoy, looking at the sky, I could see the remainder of the bats desperately trying to gain altitude and fly away. I would have flipped them off if I was able to move. The guns had finally stopped and I could hear them trying to get a status on their people and equipment. I felt my chest and, yep, I got a punctured lung. Shit. Well, I'm fucked. Only thing to do now is wait for the light to come and take me. Crap. I'm starting to feel cold, too. Don't mind it much, though. I saved some people. More than the ones in the convoy. Those in this complex would have more food for themselves. I, I already showed them where and how to get water, so they would be good there. Hell, I'm, I'm sure even the Mollies will, will even find a mate for themselves one day. They were starting to look pretty good after all. Besides, some guys are into that. Oh, I'm getting tired now. It's getting harder to breathe, too. I don't feel my left side and chest moving. When I breathe so that I think the lung is gone. My, my seconds are fading away now. Out of everything, I wanted to tell my family I was safe, or at least I was alive. If they were still out there. My family. My, my girls. My, my my new family why why could couldn't I keep them safe more lights ah uh, lights from the side of my vision blinding from the right must close that eye can't see hands hands on me ha hands no claws no not not paws no, no more, like, like hands. Wait, who is this guy? This guy, this guy's looking down at me. Oh, I know the other guy. He, he shot that spider. Hmm, hell of a shot, man. Well, well, what are they yelling? Can't focus. Hard to breathe. Why is someone rolling at me on my side? Something, something on my back. It's cold, and I, I can't place it. Losing breath, letting go. I guess this was the last one. With that, a piece of plastic is shoved into the hole in my lung, and I take a huge deep breath. Looking around, the group from the complex had reached me. I began looking around for the girls and only saw one as several hands grabbed me and everyone told me not to move. The medic was getting out surgical gear we had scavenged a week prior. I couldn't speak, but I tried to convey my gratitude with my eyes. I saw what the doc had pulled out and knew he didn't have any anesthetic, so yeah, this was going to hurt. A lot. He drove the metal rod between my ribs while the others held me down. I could feel the tube going in as I tried desperately to stay still. It must have been the low blood or because I could all I could do was produce a low scream of pain as I could feel the blood begin to flow out of my chest and as my lung began to fully inflate again. More and more I could take deep breaths as the blood and fluids were pulled away. Once I could speak, I only had one thing to ask. The girls... Where are the girls? Are they okay? 
As I began to get more aggressive with my movements, they assured me that the mollies were okay when I felt a hand on the side of my face that made me calm down. It was the one I saved earlier. And her sister was right there behind her. I held still now, not because the pain was subsiding, no, but I knew that I had to be strong for them. The medic gave some instructions to the people around me and, and left, but not before saying, You can save this demon if you want. Pretty sure one of the mollies got in his face about that one. As I got more and more air into me, I noticed that the pain was beginning to subside. Either I was running out of blood or there was something else going on. I got my answer when the medic came back 15 minutes later. He pulled back the bandages and looked just... He just kept pulling. Though I didn't feel great, there wasn't much pain at all. I heard him say, what the fuck is going on? And everyone else asked what he was talking about. As it turned out, my wounds had begun to close already. They were not fully healed, but there was little need for bandages. The one in charge of the squad I had saved came over and thanked me for the help before and then helped me to my feet. That is when he finally got a good look at me. Though hunched over due to the injuries, I still towered over him and seemed to scare him just a little bit as I stretched my wings out just to make sure they still worked. They ached and I knew I wouldn't be flying for a while. He shook hands and that was when I told him, if you're going to clear out the stores, you better... Do it during the day, with the big ones hunt at night. He seemed a bit amused, but it was difficult to have a sense of humor when you just lost some people. They told us of a military post that was about an hour and 30 minutes drive from us, was taking in refugees, almost demanding that our human companions follow them back. They told him they would think about it, and would be showing up during the day, if they wanted to go that way, that is. I limped back to the vehicles and realized there just wasn't any room. They had only brought the cars and no trucks. Looks like I'm walking, I said. I told them that as I slowly made my way to the tree line. The convoy left before I even touched a tree and our companions left shortly after. I chuckled and realized that the convoy was probably waiting to see which way our vehicles would go. Just to know which way to watch for us, that is. This made me a little nervous, but I wasn't thinking about it too much. The Mollies followed me into the forest as we made our way to, well, let's just say we had to make a quick stop. The fallen soldiers were still there, and I needed nourishment soon or I was going to pass out completely. Ripping the clothes off, I didn't even care what parts I was eating. I was so unbelievably hungry after not only a fight, but also recovering from injury. It wasn't until I'd gotten from the feet to the chest that I realized what I was eating was female. Any guy would have stopped to admire the nice pair of tatas that was in front of me, even if they were about to be supper. Later on, I felt like total shit not telling the soldiers to go get their fallen, but considering how many times the mollies jumped to the side to take out the scavengers, that thought kind of left me fast enough. To this day, I still can't bring myself to eat the head. Maybe a bite off the face if I'm starving that much, but that's about it. Instead, we dug holes and tried to bury their clothing in the trees next to them in a solemn tribute to them. I looked at my new kin and realized that we are all like this now. I looked at my hands, covered in blood and dirt, and started to walk back to our home. As we did, the two youngest grabbed each of my hands as though they were afraid of the dark as I was going to go away again. I scratched them both on their backs and something cats seemed to love as we made our way back. Dawn was approaching as we walked up. I was more than a little tired, so the men decided to let me take a few days off of guard duty. Good thing too, since the sleep was beginning to kick my ass. I know this feeling, and it's an old friend. My body felt weird as I crawled up the stairs. The two young mollies followed me, and I could see the others curling up for a good long nap in the living room. When I got upstairs, I collapsed to my knees as I got through the bedroom door, and as I got to the bed, the girls asked, 
can we stay here with you? I simply told them to open the windows first. Not that I was hot, but I needed them to back off so I could spread out a little bit. Opening my wings, I laid down on my back and I could feel each of them crawl under each arm as sleep began to take me away. That was one hell of a day and night. What do they have for tomorrow? Tomorrow? Hell. I was asleep for the next five days. When I woke up in the mid-afternoon and my wings were killing me, not because I slept for so long, but because I fell asleep on my back and laying on top of them is always a bad idea. I had to use my tail to wrap around the side of the bed just to sit up. As I moved my wings and rotated my spine, I could hear all sorts of joints cracking and popping. It was like an orchestra of pops and crunching in a crescendo of relief as I simply said, ah, sighing in relief for a moment as I returned mentally to my body. My arms and legs repeated this as I began to step to the doorway. Once I got up, I had to wonder, what the hell is that smell? Making me wait downstairs, I received a massive shock. The mollies had changed again. What the hell? I just looked dumbfounded at them for a moment as they looked up and down on me. I asked them what happened while I was asleep, and they all looked at each other and giggled. Needing a real answer, I asked again, What happened? They told me to go look in a mirror for and I went into the bathroom and looked. I realized I had changed too, but in an odd way. My shoulders and chest were still broad, and my abs were still well-defined, but my waist had gotten considerably thinner. It wasn't like I was emasculated, just thinner. So much thinner, in fact, that my abdominal muscles were much more defined. My legs had changed a bit too, almost graceful in their appearance. Even my face seemed to have become a little softer in its appearance. Grabbing both sides of the mirror, I looked myself up and down in complete shock. There was no denying it now. Something I had suspected from the first time the sleep couldn't be fought anymore. After my initial transformation, I had been eating other parts of other creatures. Each time, I had gained some sort of attribute from them. Now, my wings, tail, new vision, and even quick healing made perfect sense. Walking out of the bathroom, I looked at the mollies. It was clear that since they'd been eating humans lately, their appearance had changed me much more so than before. I even heard one of them speak for the first time ever. And clearly, too. Though she looked the most feline of all of them, she was still clearly more human than before, with the fact that all the other meats that we had been eaten were cooked or preserved, it stood to reason that only raw meat would trigger this change, or, in some cases, raw parts, thinking about this as I instinctively moved my tail and wings. Staggering to the kitchen, I was getting lightheaded as I thought about this, I looked at my hide and I could see that I had gotten much softer and sleeker scales, almost more like skin than anything else. I still had my claws and my hands and feet were virtually unchanged, at least that was a thought. Sitting down, the mollies came over to see if I was alright. Since I was still in shock, I didn't speak as they handed me a cup of water. Sipping at it, I continued to wrap my brain around all the changes. I thought about the spiders that were half human as though about how many people they ate to get that far back to their original form. I thought about the pigs on how they cannibalized their own so they didn't change, or maybe just got bigger. It was possible they had figured this out and they were trying to keep from changing even more. I mean, they did cook their food. The bear that had clear human attributes. Maybe it was only after the soldiers became more human? I don't know. My mind raced with questions as I finally raised my head. The Mollies were still concerned about me, so I decided to move their minds elsewhere as I asked, So, what's for supper? They seemed to lighten the mood a little bit. Later on, I went to talk to the human compatriots. The look of shock on their faces at my new form or look, or however you want to put it, was one for the ages. It must have been more than I realized because the youngest ones didn't even recognize me. 
After dealing with my nephew back in the day, I knew how to deal with shit like that. I mean, that's what happens when you don't see him for several years. With the adults and creatures together, I brought up what I figured what was going on. The humans were a little worried when I mentioned that eating creatures and humans is what changed us. Though there was tension, a quick mention of mutual survival seemed to calm their nerves so they didn't realize they were not on the menu. I did recommend that we keep our group segregated to ease tensions, though that wasn't what made everyone relax. It was the kids asking if they could go flying again. Even though it was after dark, the parents agreed and half of my night guard was taken up with the humans around. Yes, I took some adults up there too. Even after the children went to sleep, I stayed in the skies. I had a lot of thinking to do. Gliding silently through the air was cleansing to the mind and allowed me to think. It wasn't until about 2.45 that I heard a strange howl coming from one of the far buildings of the complex. I circled and I listened for the strange noises and eventually landed as soft as possible on the roof of the building that made the noise. Slowly, lowering my head over the side of the roof to get a view, I suddenly heard a mix of a woman's scream and a cat scream. I pulled back for a second before hearing the odd sounds again. I again slowly and carefully lowered my head to see in the window. Quickly, I pulled my head back and hoped the sight of the kitty couple fucking wouldn't be seared into my mind. Ugh, that was wrong. Trying to shake the image out of my head, I softly clawed across the roof and took to the skies again. Unfortunately, I had to listen to them for the next half an hour. When dawn was approaching, I made my way up as high as I could to see if there was any remnants of civilization on the horizon. The only thing I could see were the tall buildings of the closest city far off in the distance. There was no smoke, no movement, no noises, nothing I could lock onto. That was disheartening, so I made my way back to the complex where I was greeted with smiles from the group. I guess everything was good since everyone got a full night's sleep. After breakfast, it was time for another water run. This time, though, we were going to roll pretty heavy on firepower. Assorted shotguns and high-caliber rifles made up our long-range protection, and a plethora of blades and big swords took care of close range. This time, we decided to use one of the vehicles to get a large supply instead of making several trips. This would mean that we would be going to the bridge to collect from. I wasn't too keen on the idea, but we needed water before our reserves reached critical levels. Besides, Letting the kids swim was a good idea to cool off from the summer heat. It wasn't a long drive at all, and the vehicles got lined up as close to the water as they could without the risk of getting stuck. I had to keep an eye open from above as I saw them fill up container after container. I was getting thirsty myself looking at what was happening. I knew when they were done because I saw the kids sprint into the water, flinging off their clothes as they went. I could hear the mothers yelling at them, I'm guessing to put their clothes back on, and the fathers just laughing their asses off. I chuckled too, at least until I noticed something coming down the road, and it was coming fast. <laughs>